Call it Paul Bubba Sparks. Booty, yeah, booty, booty, rock and never wear. Booty, booty. What's up YouTube, it's Desi and I'm back with another video y'all and in this video I'm going to talk to you guys on how to draw blood like a pro when it comes to phlebotomy you guys. Now usually I am a visual learner so I do everything as far as for visual. Um, I will have some videos and pictures to kind of show you guys as far as for what tubes and everything will be getting used during phlebotomy but however um, this is to kind of show you step by step just the easy process of things to remember when drawing blood and hopefully this can kind of help you to turn into a pro as far as for how to draw blood but i don't have any type of like system or anything set up where i have like a fake dummy or anything like that this is just kind of guide you along with the steps okay so usually whenever you draw blood you want to try to have all your materials set aside um for the most part this flyer that i'm going to be looking at it kind of has all the materials right here if you guys can kind of see that this will be the tourniquet right here for you these are your tubes that'll be the needle this will be your bag for collection that'll be the alcohol wipe this is your gauze that's the butterfly needle um, I think that's the evacuated tube, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the list. So the most important thing first, you want to always try to make sure you have all your materials set up before you try to bl draw blood for someone. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to have to be running this way to go get something, running that way to go get something. Try to have a minimum of everything for you. Um, now, there's a total of eight items that you want to try to have as far as for on hand whenever you're trying to draw blood. For the most part, when I went to go get my phlebotomy, um, certificate basically the lady will always tell us always try to have at least eight items and those eight items are going to be you want to keep in mind that you have the needle either straight or butterfly you want to have the tourniquet that'll be the band that you tie around right here so whenever you're tying the tourniquet you want to try to put this hand as a guidance put that hand right here basically anything that's underneath this pinky that'll be where you tie that tourniquet at. and a tourniquet cannot be left on no longer than one minute in other words 60 seconds that will be on your test so needles tourniquet alcohol wipes, gloves, band-aids, you're going to need the tube to put the blood in, you're also going to need a bag to put the blood filled tube, and if needed, a trans, a transfer device or syringe if using a butterfly needle. So that'll be like the seven things that you need as far as for that. Um, for the most part, you want to make sure that you have gauze on here. I didn't see gauze as well too. So gauze is basically going to be like that little square thing that you use to kind of put Whenever you're done drawing blood, most people use a cotton ball or some people use a gauze. Um, you're going to put that right here, apply pressure, hold that for a little minute, and then you're going to go ahead and wrap around the tape and bandage for the patient. So that'll be the main thing. Make sure that you have your items um, set aside. Next step is going to be to introduce yourself. So always introduce yourself. Let yourself know exactly. Let the patient know exactly who you are and who they're going to be dealing with. So I'll be like, I'm Desiree. I'm going to be your phlebotomist today. And today I'm just going to get a CBC uh, tube from you that's going to be complete blood count so always just tell the person who you are make sure you feel confident about yourself because whenever you're looking like you're scared you're going to make the patient scared and that's that so always make sure you keep it short whenever trying to introduce yourself even having a name tag can sometimes help as well too because they can know exactly who to you know say did the service and everything for them all right next step you're going to go ahead and put on your gloves and when you put on your gloves you're going to then ask the patient to go ahead and lift their arm left or right arm because now you're going to go ahead and try to identify those veins that'll be the next step for you so the next step is to go ahead and identify those veins so basically you're going to go ahead and try to apply the tourniquet to the patient that's where i then said to go ahead and put that tourniquet at least three to four inches above the venipuncture site you're going to put that um, tourniquet on and then you're going to go ahead and start searching for the vein. So a tourniquet looks something like this. That's how a tourniquet looks. You never want to put the tourniquet on too tight. You never want to put the tourniquet on too loose. For the most part, tourniquets are really uncomfortable. So for the most part, whenever you put that tourniquet on, make sure you're ready to get the blood out of the way because that is really uncomfortable. Especially if you have someone with meaty arms like me, it's really uncomfortable. All right, so next step is you're going to start checking for the veins. So whenever you check for the veins, it's a term we like to use called palpate. Palpate basically means as in you're going to try to look for that thing like that. You're trying to get it like where it's like pumped up so you're able to see that vein. Most of the time, tell the patient to make a fist as well too, and you'll be able to see that vein pop out. And for the most part, you want to try to look for the veins that's in the area right here, the main area right here for you. Um, you don't want to try to get on the side because that usually hurts for the most part. Most people like to get veins right here if they can't get the area right here. But for the most part, this is your main site that you're going to be using. So you're just going to try to check for the vein. And then once you check for the vein, don't expect to just 
because you see the vein pop out that's the vein that you're going to want when you apply that tourniquet you will see the vein that you're going to soon to go ahead and get so most people usually when they see someone come in the office they're like oh you got good veins it is not going to take long to get it for the most part a person can have good veins but that don't mean they're going to have a good blood flow so make sure that you keep that in mind as well too all right so the next step is to go ahead and clean the site usually when you clean the site what you're going to do is you're going to have an alcohol wipe and when you have the alcohol wipe, you're going to go ahead and just do on a circular motion. So pretend this is an alcohol wipe. This is a Q-tip. Because pretend this is alcohol wipe. And what you're going to do is you're going to start right here. And you're going to work your way on out. As you're working your way out into the circular motion, you want to make sure that you're not double crossing. Most people, you will never want to do this. You don't never want to do it this way. You don't want to do that. At the end of the day, you want to just do it in that circular motion and you want to let it air dry. Don't do this either when you air dry. I hate seeing people do that. Like, it's like, what is that supposed to do? So, yeah, at the end of the day, you want to clean it for at least 5 to 20 seconds with a pad and then apply alcohol to the finger. Sometimes people like to feel for the vein again um, before sticking the person. But, yeah, that'll be how you um, want to do it. If you don't feel confident about yourself, always get someone else to try to help assist as far as for getting the vein. All right, so the next thing is you're going to use the needle. So whenever you use the needle, just make sure that you, whenever you see that first flash of blood, you're doing so good. Just make sure you just tell the patient, don't panic or anything like that. Usually how I do it. Now, my first time when I was drawing blood from someone, I sweat more than I do anything. So it's not like I'm nervous. It's just the fact that it's just, it. I don't know. It's just the feeling for me sometimes. But whenever you're going in to draw blood, pretend this is the needle and this is how you're going to do it so you're done cleaning it what you're going to do is the needle this is the bevel you always want to make sure that the bevel is up so whenever you look closely to a needle it's always like a small little hole that'll be the bevel part that bevel part needs to be up if you have it face down there's no way you're going to have a successful draw so you want to make sure you have that bevel part up whenever you're um going in the bevel part needs to be up and you just insert in slowly some people you don't need a jab when you're ever you're trying to get blood from someone it's not really all that serious unless someone has um you know thicker skin that's a lot deeper tissue you want to pull back and after you pull back go ahead and just kind of so pull back and you're going to go ahead and insert that needle in and as soon as you see that first flash that's when you just know you're good then you go ahead and start grabbing your tubes once you grab your tubes connect it into there and then that's when you'll go ahead and then start getting that once you see the tube is getting filled that's when you then go ahead and pull that tube on out you're going to pop that turn yeah you're going to pull that tube on out you're going to pop that tourniquet once you pop that tourniquet, you're going to then grab your gauze, put the gauze right here, and then go ahead and pull that tube out. That way it won't be like the patient is, you know, bleeding out. What you never want to do is try to put the um, the gauze right here and try to move this out because the patient will still be bleeding out if you don't pop that tourniquet. So always make sure you pop the tourniquet as soon as you're done getting the um, amount that you need. All right. So yeah, of course, you want to remove that needle, immediately put the cap back on. As soon as you're done with that needle, immediately put the cap back on. That's another important part. And um, yeah, you want to make sure that you just basically label those tubes once you're done. For the most part, I like to make sure that I have everything labeled beforehand. On here, it says the label once you're done. But for the most part, always check for your labels before you know completing everything. For the most part, when I was working at um, medical assistant for um, OBGYN for my externship, we did phlebotomy and... We would label the um we would label the tubes beforehand because at the end of the day, what if you get somebody blood work mixed up or something like that and you may have a lot going on? So put the labels on before, verify the patient, and then that's how you'll then go ahead and do everything that way. Um important things to remember as far as for drawing blood, don't panic. At the end of the day, when you make it look like you're scared, you're gonna make the patient scared. So don't panic. At the end of the day, if they ask you how long you've been doing this, just continue to just go along with the flow and make the patient feel comfortable. That way they won't feel scared at any given moment. But for the most part, that's pretty much how you draw blood like a pro. I mean, I could be able to tell you guys all the way as far as for how to draw blood, but it's all into how you get your experience with it. That's why I tell people most of the time, if you have the opportunity to work at a plasma center, definitely work at it. You'll get you a lot of practice as far as for practicing on um, some of the donors on how to get really good as far as for phlebotomy. Not only that, if you're into the medical assistant field, um, whenever you go on your externship, you will have plenty of experience as far as for how to draw blood. So um, that's not going to be anything bad. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, comment down below and I'll be sure to give you as much input as I can. But hopefully this can help you out and be a bigger step as far as for on how to draw blood. Um, and just try to be confident. That's all you can do. Just try to be confident. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And y'all have a good one. Peace.